All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, tonight, we're super excited to have the Black Flag Investor webinar uh, taking place. Um, so we've got the whole crew from Black Flag here uh, joining us from their Coolum facility. Do you guys just want to say a quick hello? Hey, hey guys. guys. There they are, looking very cozy on the couch um, in the brand new Coolum facility, which, um, which I hear is uh, making a big wave up in sunny coast um the press has been crawling all over it the last week or so i hear it's like willy wonka's chocolate factory only better because it's filled with delicious beers um i couldn't make it there tonight but i'm trying to channel that energy behind the bar that's that's where i am tonight um my name's marty from birch i'll be hosting the webinar and um tonight it's all about uh the participants uh, everyone who's joined thanks for taking up your evening um to be here you know, after work, we hope you're relaxing. If you want to be cracking a beer, I think the team at Black Flag certainly are. So please feel free to do that. For the next minute or so while people are joining, I'll just give a bit of a rundown of what's going to happen this evening. Um, so if anyone needs to run off um, for a minute or two now, this isn't the essential part of the webinar. So please do so. If you want to head to the fridge or the bathroom, um, we'll probably run for about 60 minutes, maybe more tonight. So uh, just keep that in mind. So um, tonight, it's all about Q&A questions. I'm sure you've got a lot of questions you want to ask the crew and um, they've been really generous with their time. So you'll notice down the bottom here, we've got a QA and a panel and um, that's where we'd re recommend if you have any questions at any time during the webinar, just to chuck them in there. Um, we've also enabled a feature where you can upvote questions as well. So if you see a question that you think uh, you definitely want to have answered, please feel free to give it a like and then it'll shoot it to the top. And uh, when we get to the Q&A uh, section of the webinar, which will be after the, the fellows there present, um, we'll try and get through all of them. So uh, I won't take up, any, take up any more time. I'll just pass over now to the Black Flag crew so they can introduce themselves and uh, get started with the first part of the webinar, which will be their presentation. Over to you guys. Hey guys, thanks for that. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm the uh, Steve Barber, the CEO for Black Flag. Uh, I'm Clint. I look after projects and commercial group growth. John, I got production, everything beer, everything beer. And I'm Ben. I look after the sales team. We're missing Ross today. He's um, come up a bit crook, but uh, yeah. Islanders. Yeah, no, we're just, um, we've been fielding a lot of questions over the last um, week and a half, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot, of, um, a lot of communication, a lot of calls. We've been trying to get back to everybody, a lot of emails, lots of emails, but um, it's lovely. It's really good. We're getting great responses and everybody seems super excited, which is awesome. Really, yeah, really good. We're excited. Mm. So, um, yeah, we've got a bit of a presentation that we can sort of run over with you guys. But uh, and then, yeah, go into the Q&A straight after. Yeah. yeah pop a colour. Hey. Look so, at that. What festival is this? Gladstone. 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 Yeah. I think it's Rockhampton. That's definitely glad to have in the Rocky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. Okay, um, we can go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to go through Black Flag and who we are, um, the Black Flag mantra, our vision and mission, uh, past and present financials, the fun part, our business strategy and marketing, sales growth, use of funds and rewards. So there's a bit to go through, but we'll, um, we'll make it light. We'll make it good. Yeah. And then a Q&A. Cool. So our story. So Black Flag, Black Flag was born 2019. Um, we all come from hospitality. Yeah. Uh, well, in some sense, we're electricians and builders and everything as well. But um, in the last 10 years, we've uh, 10, 12, 13 years. 13 years, uh, yeah. Yeah, yep. been operating um, several establishments. I think we've opened up about six ourselves. Uh, Ben's got a couple. We've got we've Taps Mooloola Bar. Um, Dirty Moe's. Beach Bar and Grill, Dirty yeah. Moe's in Mooloola. And uh, obviously the Black Flag venues now, yeah. which one of them was three on three social. But uh, yeah, so we come from a good understanding of what uh, craft beer is, basically. We've we, been on the other side of the bar. Yeah. yeah. We've poured a, a lot of beers, a lot yeah. of different beers. So we rotate a lot of craft beers, a lot of different taps, and we have for a decade. So yeah, we've got a real good understanding of what sells, what doesn't, and uh, most of it sells. Yeah, it all sells. Yeah. Plus, we're good on the um, drinking side of it, too. We're well practiced. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for black. <laughs> uh, you want to take this one? Yeah. Sorry? So, the beginning, um, we did start in 2019. It was early 20, uh, mid 2019 when we all sort of sat down on Steve's deck and gone, all right, well, this is what we plan on doing. He had an idea. 
let's cut out the middleman and do beer ourselves. We can do this. We've got this. And um, probably three or four months worth of prep ready for the license to come through December. And then that was it. It was on. Unfortunately, when we launched, so did COVID. And it was sort of, we didn't coincide with them as best we could, but um, it happened. But what came from that was um, the transfer and the name from the 313 Social that Steve mentioned earlier uh, to Black Flags. That was our little hole in the wall, which we aptly named the Glory Hole. And we could sell um, our takeaways through there for that period where we weren't quite sure what was going on in COVID like sense anyway, but um, the community jumped on real quick on that one. It was fantastic. The response was amazing from everyone that came by. So we basically had our first beer coming out um, in kegs and cans. Mm -hmm. And then we had a couple of weeks left until we were basically, until we pretty well shut down. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, we had to utilize that time. We changed the, um, well, we tipped the kegs back in the tank to get cans out. And yeah. The community backed us really, really strong. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Everyone came down, bought um, bought takeaways, which was phenomenal. We just the response from that was excellent. That was, was, um, yeah. When Woolworths came on board. Yeah, Woolworths did that initiative with the um buy local, and that was a yeah, it was fantastic for us at that beginning point. A bit of a silver lining in what was a very dark cloud. Um, Being that it was that time, we didn't even have we had zero um, supplies. We weren't going. We hadn't gone anywhere. No, yet. we had no chance to. Yeah. Same time too, though, while that was all going, we were obviously contracting. That was, was probably, you know, our model on that end of it. Um, we outgrew that to the first facility quite quickly. So within the first year, we were just finding a second brewery to, to brew our stock so we keep up with what was going on. So we brewed at Glasshouse um, locally, then uh, moved over to Ether. Um, we were brewing there for a little while. We put some beer in Boiling Pot. Yep, um, wherever we could find yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so I think we, in our first year, we released three beers. We went through... The um, old school and the affinity. And affinity. affinity yeah, yeah. 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 So that was um that was a bit of a troublesome year, but it was also exciting. We took out our first 1500 litre batch and we were amazed at how much beer we had to sell. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> remember looking at it and it was just like wall to wall packaged beer, kegs, and we're like, how are we going to sell this? Yeah. That was 1500 litres. Yeah. So yeah. we haven't brewed a 1500 litre batch. No, we don't go near that yeah. ever again. There's no point. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Great. That was a, that was a, that was 2020, basically. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 2021 saw massive growth. We just went from strength to strength. But with that came a couple of problems. We realized we couldn't keep up with the market demand. So we uh, started the long search to uh, find a, a place to call home for a production facility. Went from Gympie, Gold Coast, uh, a couple of times in, in Brisbane. Brisbane. Nearly signed, what, four leases? <laughs> Yeah, very, very, very close to signing a lot of leases. Um, we ended up finding the perfect home in, in Coolum. So started that, started the build, and um, we'll talk more about that in 2022. But uh, in true Black Flag style, we actually bought the brewery before we had a place to house it. So um, we bought our Kaju's um, old brewery down in Melbourne. We we're lucky enough to pounce on that. Yeah. Just at the right time, so really suited us, suited us, which is just fantastic. Um, we had to put it in storage, which I think it was heartbreaking. Months, yeah, yeah, killed us all yeah. a little bit. Little broken hearts everywhere. Um, we also travelled around the country. Um, we did a lot of festivals, um, tap takeovers. It was every weekend. Collabs. I swear to God. Yeah, pretty much every weekend. And it was really our mission to get out and about, wasn't it? Like yeah. Be yeah. out in the community and be out all the festivals. Yeah. Um, we grew our sales team from one to three, which was exceptional, and onboarded a whole heap of wholesale retailers, uh, heaps of venues, um, not only in our home area, Sunshine Coast, but also um, Brisbane, Gold Coast, um, Central Queensland, mm. one or two down in um, Victoria, and couple up in Cairns and Port Douglas. So it was a really great year of growth. That was a bit of a, that was a pivot on business that year. Yeah. Our business model was based around um, contract brewing, or pirate brewing as we like to call yeah, it yeah. back then. So we intended on going around to all our friends' breweries and brewing <laughs> beer and moving it back. And it was an absolutely unsustainable business model. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't just no. logistics <laughs> skills, but. So we, um, we went through that and we, we really got a good understanding of what yeah. we're doing. We actually hired a data analyst to really understand what we're doing. Connor, who's yeah. working the computer. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, <laughs> Thank <you>. Behind the camera. <laughs> um, we, uh, yeah, we sort of, 
that was our time when we we basically analyzed exactly what we were doing and what we could do in the future. The CRM came in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah matured. Yeah, yeah matured yeah. overall. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we uh, moved into we found the brewery, and then yeah, we took the second time to find the um, facility. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a full business change in that year. It was. But yeah. um, exceptional growth. It was. Um, it was strong. Twenty twenty two. What a year. So huh. as you guys may know, um, fast forward to today, we opened the brewery uh, Saturday uh, a week, week ago, oh, yeah. the week before last. Mm. And all through this year was really the brewery build. So we were super lucky, as Benny was saying before, we found the perfect home and it was because we were able to do a built for purpose facility and all the learnings we had from 2021 and really understanding the magnitude of this business, we were prepping for expansion. So we've got a facility that can really handle the growth moving forward, upwards and onwards of 3 million litres per year based on space and services, et cetera. Um, we utilised a lot of our um, friends in the brewing industry. Mm, yeah. um, so taken from their mistakes. Um, we weren't reinventing <laughs> the wheel. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, it gave us a real leg up. We've been dealing with craft beer in a lot of these breweries for a long time. So everyone's been very, very accepting about Super collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been really good on that end. So the mistakes made once, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really gave us the chance to push forward. Yeah, we really matured um, as a business to the next level. So Ben was really driving a uh, stronger sales team. You've got them up to five now. Yeah, Benny. five five people in sales yeah. team now. Which um, yeah, we'll just to continue to grow. Um, you know, even before the end of the year, we're looking to increase that again. So, yeah. yeah. And then we kept up with our mantra of every weekend being out and about and having presence. So she's been a toil and we're here today talking to you guys as well because yeah. uh, <laughs> we're, we're pretty excited about where the business can head. Um, the, unfortunately, the Kaiju Brewery brew house as it stands at the moment has hit capacity. So we need <laughs> yeah. to, yeah, you know, Invest in the um the, the growth brew of that, yeah. yeah, the brew house. We but bought that well, seventeen months ago, and we were like, "This is going to be massive." It's yeah. Yeah. Nice. This will do us for a couple of years. We thought, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Connor told us it wouldn't. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, went. we um we tried to utilize this year to um grow our sales as strong as we could to match our brewing capabilities mm. coming yeah. in a new place. Yeah. So we didn't want to have a level of pause or disjoint between um, our contract brewing and moving into our own area. And that was that was a bit of sweet because there was a few delays with the brewery build, just the way the world is with supply chain and the likes of that for the build. So the in parallel, sunshine coast, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, in parallel, we we're really driving the sales effort and the marketing and the events, and really testing ourselves see if we could hit these ambitious goals. And oh, we're pretty results. happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the black flag mantra, I'm reading from over there too. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> so we were beer drinkers before we were brewers and we were also beer slingers before we were brewers. Yes, mm. yeah. Most so, importantly. Um, we've, we've put a lot of work into our strategy and a lot of work into our structure, um, understanding who we are and how we want to come across and how we want to sell. So we do really design, we, by design, it's kind of us in essence on how we um, try and portray ourselves. Yes. So it's been um it's been a it's been good fun. Mm. And the way we sort of see it, beer is about good fun. Like we're supposed yeah. to have a good time while we're doing it. So um as much as this is a hard job, it's hard work, we do get to have a few beers <laughs> and we do get to go out and see a lot of people that are having a very good time. Oh, we're gonna work again this weekend? Yeah. yeah. Not that. Yeah. No, not at all. The um the relationships we've built while Steve was saying that too, that's part of the fun of it traveling around, meeting all these people, building that community um, from being in hospitality, all of us for a long time. That's what we love. So this is pretty much our mission that you can see on the screen here, but it's to build an exciting, progressive, inclusive and creative brew culture. So we tried to transcend that a little bit because like that's, that's exactly what we've tried to do, but mm. we've pushed it a little bit further by jumping in with a lot of different people in different fields as well. So we work in multiple areas with like, and understanding who we are. And I think that identity is um, extremely important in any product, especially in a product as strong as yeah. beer. Pretty and keen to hold strong to that identity yeah. too. Yeah. Live yeah. by what you do. Yep. Yeah. So we really, it's, it's all there to be read, but um, we really work on exactly like the different 
pillars, I guess, yeah. of who we are. But uh, yeah, cool. Financials. So, yeah, the numbers, the important part of a sustainable business. <laughs> so we're really excited with the results we've had, as we mentioned. So last uh, 2021 to 2022, we had a 200% growth in sales. Uh, you can see there we've broken down our quarters and we're using quarters because we're such a young business too. Yeah, um, that's right. But quarter on quarter, we're having that <clears throat> median growth, which is just really exciting at the moment. Now, on the right, we just wanted to show you some of the data analytics that Steve was touching base on before. So it's a bit of a spread on our market at the moment. But what we're really excited for is having Connor on board, our business analyst, who is really driving that data for us. So we're actually pretty keen to be an analytical company and really understand the data and where the market's heading and what we're doing with that. We actually pride ourselves that we're yeah. quite professional when it comes to that, even though we might not come across as professional. <laughs> yeah. We don't. Yeah, but I know it, what I'm brewing. It's yeah, six weeks. We're good. It is a real point of pride. So all the finances, the breakdowns and what have you will be in the offer document. Um, when that gets released, but there's a bit of a summary of our revenue growth, and we're just really proud of that trajectory. Mm. We're moving quickly. We're um we're projecting quite well, mm. well, so we understand what we need to do. There's a big gap between um when you brew a beer, when you get the raw ingredients, to when you actually get be able to sell it. Yeah, yeah. not no, nah, you can sell it. It's about oh, um, getting the actual money coming back in. So us projecting and understanding what we're doing is pretty important for a yeah, business 100%. for us. Yeah. So yeah, that's um it's. But it's going strength to strength, so we're super excited about it. Yep. So where we're um, moving forward with our business strategy. So again, touching on what Steve was sort of talking about there, we actually have a plan and um, strategic, strong plan. Yeah, yeah, real strong plan. And it it does get reviewed and tested. And the, I guess the history of our yeah, brand does, is always yeah. about that test, try, and then see what works right. And pivot when you need to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Using the word pivot. Yeah. <laughs> Strategic expansion of our fermentation tanks, as we touched on, we need to grow our facility to keep up with demand. Uh, but we do believe we are a marketing company uh, that sells great beer and the marketing programs that we currently have in place, and we'll touch on them a bit more later in the presentation, is an essence of who we are. So we're definitely going to be investing in that marketing side of the business. I think someone eloquently said before, almost like the Red Bull sort of model. Yep. Mm. Yeah. You know what? We're not ashamed that that's, that's no, someone that no, we aspire to and that sort of style of going to market. It's a little bit being a differentiator. Um, opening more tap houses in new growth areas. We believe the more tap houses we have in new geographic areas is the way we're going to get the brand recognition mm. and get the following. Um, increase our sales team. So Benny's driving that sales team. As we said before, we got five, and he's really aggressive at the moment to keep that presence in their new areas. And the last one is the one we're excited about. It's empowering the existing shareholders to be ambassadors. So okay. anyone that comes on board through this crowdsource campaign, we, we just think this is brilliant. Having all these owners around to spread the word because you're essentially co-owners of the business is brilliant. And we'll talk about beers and ideas later, but we have every intention to have the shareholders part of the Black Flag family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. It's um, the, that key part, that ambassador, ambassador, when they come on, is um, what we're super excited about. Collaborative. Yeah, collaborative. Collaboration. Yeah, many minds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well marketing yeah. and brand ambassadors. <laughs> this is kind of um, a little bit different, but if you have a look at the images on the left, we've just brewed, well, we recently brewed a beer with Lagerstein. Um, the guy in the middle there is the lead singer and he's also our um, venue manager. Yeah. manager yeah. GM, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, down the bottom, we were just with the boys for Nitro Circus the other day. So they were yep. on the Nitro Triple Circus World that Tour. Buddy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. We do a shitload of skate events. That's, um, that's always something that we're pretty keen on. It's always good fun. We partnered up with Sunny Skate Series and stuff like that. Um, jet ski tournament, which mm -hmm. I haven't gone to because I keep going to another festival in Northampton. <laughs> it's the the I go to the no, one it's great. Yeah, John and I go to that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's the this kind of just a couple of ideas of pretty much how we um trying to portray ourselves and try and link in with the um with what we actually like in yeah. essence. So that's what we enjoy. That makes it not, not work. Yeah, the weekends <laughs> aren't that tough. Put it that way. 
sitting on a beer drinking beer watching Jeski. It's pretty fun. Pretty good. Yeah. Excuse That's me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, okay. So some of the cool things we've done. Yeah. Um. We we sort of went in with a bit of a bang, and we knew that like with the marketing side of it, it's not only like it's digital marketing, but it's like it's basically like strong presence as well. Our first gabs, we took a half pipe to it. So a full size half pipe came in. Yeah. We backed it in. We towed it from Sunshine Coast. The presenters were super excited about it. Yeah. It yeah, they were stoked with this. Taken over all the uh, area. That yeah. definitely got us best in show, though. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, it's worth it. Yeah, we uh, tripping across the country with me and John. Oh and yeah. John. Yeah, we delivered the early twenty twenty. Yeah. That was over Through in New South Wales. Yeah. We got down to Bathurst and back, and yeah, took a Pantech and I'm gave out for years. Here. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was super happy about that. We've um we bought a car that if anyone's in Sunny Coast probably seen it getting around. We hand painted <laughs> it. But, um, My view. Thanks, rally. Ross, man. Too. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> Um, collabs with bands and different brands. That's been that's been heaps of fun. I think he's drinking a chicken smitty now. Yeah, he turns out he's our neighbor now, so oh. that's even better. Uh, nitro circuits we talked about. Oh, and we did that. Um, so the latest was a um, big one was a international collab with two other places called Black Flag Brewing, oh, one yeah. in Spain, one in the States. Yeah, love so, that. Yeah, flag. we did a three flags brew, and that was a COVID call. We were um, yep. all sitting there trying to figure out like what's a good way to market, what can we do. What's something fun? And uh, yeah, then we, yeah. Zoom called and yeah. that was it. It was 8 a.m. for us, but the rest of them were fine. Yeah, so and uh, we created a beer together. So that was awesome. And it was a good beer. Yeah. It was a great beer. Yeah. yeah. I approved that one. So did Danny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Down in White Lies, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh, this has been yeah. a sales run, yeah. So as you can see, um, now over 500 customers, which is just, awesome we just the graph says it we're just going strength to strength there um we've always coming once again from the hospitality background we want to invest in people we want to really get in there help everyone that we can um get involved get yeah. involved yeah so uh we'd like to go to venues bottle shops uh have a huge presence there come and help everyone build that collaborative approach build that community um we kind of know what it's like to be at the pointy end of a um, bar yeah. or a restaurant um, when you're sitting up there and you feel like you're alone. So when a brewery comes in, it can assist. And we we learned this over the years from oh, other breweries. The reps yeah, coming in. Um, no, I want to see it. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic then. So then, yeah, it drives it forward so we can, we can work yeah, cool. together. Yeah. yeah. Um, full Queensland raging on major uh, wholesale re retailers. So we just want to solidify our um, reach in Queensland, really saturate that market because, uh, yeah, we just had – such a good response and it's just good getting product. out there now. Um, expansion of our premise, uh, on-premise events and activation. So once again, that's part of that collaborative community approach. We come in there, we um, really see what you want to do. We take it on board and help you get there. Um, we've also just recently uh, just got a whole lot of uh, New South Wales wholesale re retailers on. That's really going to help our presence down south too. So we're super excited about that. So we really um, worked on our distribution for the last um, 12 months. So working on how we're going to get the beer to the people. Yeah. So we're making sure that we're strategizing on that and then targeting our sales. So it's uh, it's just a strong business yeah. plan, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we picked up majority of the dis distributors through Queensland and it's, yeah, yeah it makes a world of difference then. Ah, what we're going to do with the funds. So minimum subscription, 500,000, maximum one and a half. So we, we obviously need brewery upgrades, but that is, um, that's dependent on where we go here. Uh, we will be putting in more tanks. We do, mm -hmm. we have basically installed the entire facility on mm -hmm. what we've had in our- yeah. The good uh, news is, is building the facility the way we have. It's not business disruptive. So all the services and space is there. It's really just Getting putting the tanks. the tanks in. So we'll yeah. be able to keep production, just keep plonking in the tanks and keep growing. Um, marketing. Obviously, we really want to drive marketing. We actually have a good time in marketing. Yeah. And as we said, we're, feel like we're a strong marketing company. Yeah. So, yeah, making sure that's there. Um, operational cash flow, it's always important in any business. Um, tap house brand licensing program. So we'll touch on this a little bit. With the background of what we do, we've opened franchises, we've opened bars, we've done fair bit there is um tying in with existing customers as more of a um 
Oh, how do you, how do you work? Well, it's a, I guess we want to be smart with the capital we have. We want to expand in venues. So this is just a st strategic way not to, I guess, purchase venues and be capital, capital, oh, yeah, capital yeah. intensive. This is a way to collaborate and look for <clears> existing <throat> venues to take on our branding. So they got a differentiator. Yep. Yeah. And, um, Geographically. Yeah. Geographically. Yeah. yeah. It helps them and it helps us grow in that area too. So once again, we just don't want to send beer up and forget about it. We want a foothold in there. So this is... This is a great way to do that. We're yep. a win-win strategy. Yeah, we can work together. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys get? <laughs> so one thing we haven't really touched on is beers and ideas. So that's pretty well how Black Flag came about. Yeah. There's yeah. beers and ideas sitting on in my house. Um, we ha I had a whiteboard with a little plan of exactly who was going to do what. I had a little business strategy, business life. plan. <laughs> yeah, I had everything ready to go. And uh, then we started basically immediately doing beers and ideas. And uh, that's when we sort of captured beers and ideas. And uh, yeah, so what it is, is we sit around and we have the whiteboards out. We have a couple of beers to lubricate ourselves a touch because then you get more <laughs> um, touch. Yeah, happier to basically take those ideas up. And, There's always uh, a theme. Yeah, yeah always yeah. a theme for the night. We invite the whole team. It's a real collaborative approach. Um, we even have different venues come along. It's just a good night to get around, have a talk, come up with, with some ideas, some really good. So some it could horrendous. be marketing, new beers, yeah. new designs, yeah. Events, whatever's coming up next. Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah, generally now it's once a month and it's 50 odd people. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something we want to invite everybody to. Yep. So we want to do a big one. Yeah. Once yep. a year, we've got the compound there now. We can close that gate and we can have a massive sausage sizzle. Well, no, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, we can have a really good time with that, I think. So yeah. and everybody's ideas are valuable. There's always some shitty ideas. There's definitely some shit. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's really that having the investors be involved with the brand. So that's yeah. how we see that there's a real potential of actually being in the family. And that's the uh, yeah. That's what we think. We might need key. some more whiteboards, but yeah, we've, we've, <laughs> we drew on the cold room. Yeah. <laughs> um, designed owner shirt. Ross has already created that, and it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it comes out in the offer document. You'll see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a rep that you're an owner. Yeah, I yeah, hundred percent. He's done some skateboards, done some eskies. Obviously, they're going to. Um, he's like, he's created them, but they may change because that's Ross's style. Um, yeah, and then we work on the percentages off, so that's always a nice thing. Mm. And if it's coming in big, then you're definitely coming to a brew day. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So that's pretty much us, mm. I think. Yeah. Well. Heaps more, I guess. There's heaps more. But um, yeah, we can pretty much open it up to questions and yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Thanks for that. Um, what a, yeah, great to hear more about the story. I think, you know, some of the jumped out to virtual about Black Flag, just a really unique approach you guys are taking to, you know, your brewery, the way you market yourself as well. Um, Did everyone think, uh, watch our video? <laughs> yeah, we can see. Yeah. You guys, um, so, um, but yeah, let's get into questions. And like I said, if you, um, that's what we're here for tonight. So feel free to chuck questions in as we go. And you can also upvote questions for um, ones that you want answered as well. That's in the Q&A panel down there. So I'll jump to the first one uh, with Andrew, who got in straight away as soon as we started. So um, Andrew's keen to know about the share price in terms of what that will be. Um, and he's also asking about if there's any plan to facilitate a permanent kitchen uh, slash food service in the cooling facility. So just in terms of share price, um, obviously you guys are welcome to answer if you want, but there'll be more detail in the, the offer document too. But um, yeah, if you want to answer any of those questions from Andrew, please go ahead. Well, I guess with the share price, we um, going through the EOI. So it's really important that we're engaging and making sure that what we believe is right, the market's actually agreeing with us. So mm -hmm. as Martin said, that will be finalised in the offer document for us. But the kitchen... Yeah, the kitchen, um, it's something close to my heart, owning uh, Dirty Mo's and Beach Bar. Uh, we started off this journey with this big brew house. We always planned to have the kitchen. Come the new year, we really want to put a, um, our own food truck in there. We'll have it running Monday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. We really want to put our own little kick on it too. So um, we think we can come up with some pretty cool offerings. For Coolum, for the north, north region, the Sunshine Coast, I'm super excited about it. Yeah, the locals, Chubby. So stay tuned for that one. Looks like some good ideas are percolating there. Um, 
So moving down the list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prioritize the questions that have the most um, likes on them. So those are the ones everyone wants answered. Um, so we'll go to them first. So Ricardo here is just asking about the percentage of the business that you're selling. So again, heaps more details will come out in the off document. Um, but if you guys want to talk through maybe the process that you went through in terms of figuring out this decision, which is usually a pretty, um, pretty significant one for companies doing this process. So yeah, do you want to just walk us through that? We really worked with our accountants um, forecasting what was, yeah, yeah what, well, not forecasting, but understanding where we've come from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, we've, it's, a, it's a tricky situation where we are at the moment because we're in like a, an absolute growth oh, phase. Massive, massive. So bringing on this new brewery and bringing on this new location has been great and great marketing and great, um, great drive. So it's, it's been hard, but we've sort of valued based on what we have been running. Mm, we're using the market too, to, yeah. to test it against. And we, we feel like if I was to give the elevator pitch on why we like this offering is because we're earlier in the piece than other yeah, brands. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big, bigger opportunity. But as Martin said, again, deep, devil in the detail with the offer document once we really lock that down and make some more phone calls and get some buy-in from yourselves actually. And that's where we're getting that gauge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you know, stay tuned for the offer document. We've got to keep um, keep some hype there. Um, but yeah, the guys have been making lots of phone calls too. So feel free to chat that through with them um, if you get a call. Um, I'll go to Aaron's question here now in terms of will there be a dividend paid for the investment? So I'll just give a little bit of um, context here as well and then um, throw over to the Black Flag team. So in terms of, you know, getting return on investment. So obviously you can either get dividends or, you know, one day, hopefully the company that lists on the stock exchange or gets bought out by a bigger provider. So, um, you know, with like normal shareholder investing, dividends are like a thing that public companies pay, but there's a bit more nuance when it comes to private companies in terms of whether it's better to reinvest that capital or, you know, pay dividends. But um, guys, you want to talk through any details there, if you thought about dividends or how you want to use, you know, the profit that you guys make in the business moving forward. We've um, we've got a strategy for growth. We yeah, um, we really yeah. want to reinvest in ourselves. We have been for the last few years, literally invested yeah. everything <laughs> in ourselves. Yeah, black flag, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. So we do have a three to five year sort of run that we want to see as much growth as we can possibly get. Yeah. So there, we couldn't. I couldn't anticipate any dividends coming out in there. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. For us, it's all about uh, profit getting reinvested to grow the business, and we just building this business to be an attractive business for potential in the future and really driving the differentiator. And hopefully there will be a big player in the future that will actually like what we do and go, you know what, we want you in your portfolio. So we're really driving the scale and driving our marketing <coughs> to be that attractive beacon. Yeah. Also a profitable business. We're, trying, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're ensuring that we're actually running a profitable business at the moment. Yeah, but um, that profit, yeah, we'll, we'll push it straight back in. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think it's any secret. Um, yeah, we're looking to really drive this business, so it is something that would be taken taken over in the future. Yeah, and on that, we love what we do. We put our heart and soul into it for the last three years. Yeah. Uh, we're pushing really hard, running really hard, going really strong. So just to back that up with Clint, yep. it's not just a get in, get out situation. We're, we're, we're here. The we love it. There. The passion's here. And um, there's three or four years of that. And then whatever happens after that is, yeah. We kind of created a brand based on ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're board. not sick of each other, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, good plans there for growth. And, like, you know, if you look at the sort of beacons of, you know, the Australian brewing industry that um, we looked to in terms of exits recently, like your pirate lives, that's all been acquisitions from bigger players. So um, that seems to be the uh, go-to strategy for, for brewers and your situation. Um, next one in terms of most popular questions from Nick Grant here. Thanks for your question. So he's asking, um, is the cooling facility uh, sufficient to enable you to scale production to meet your strategic objectives? Um, Clint can probably answer this one. Yeah, and live and, and breathe this. So <laughs> many... Um, yeah, sweaty days and nights thinking about this. We definitely thought, thought this through. So the, having the advantage to build the facility from ground up and also what Steve was talking before, like the collaboration we had with other breweries, we got to do a lot of lessons and it's such a great industry to be involved in. Yeah. So yes, the answer to your question is the facilities, the space and the services. Um, our, our brew house at the moment can handle and with the tank farm can handle half a million litres. 
we can quite easily exceed 3 million litres and more per year with what we've got. Plus, we still, we've got the big cold room, we've got the space for the canning line. Um, we're very comfortable with the, yeah, the venue being able to handle where we're going to take this yeah. place. And that was one of the main objectives when we first uh, realised our, our growth that we had to do something. We couldn't keep up with the market demand. So we sat down and over many me uh, meetings and, and also it beers, is. <laughs> um, that was something we spoke about a lot. If we were going to go down this path, we're we, going to be. Yeah, yeah. we 100% well, like, wanted. Across every brewery you talk yeah. to, they're going to go straight to, or we didn't grow enough. We didn't have enough space for what yeah. we're trying to do. Not enough space for tanks, not yeah. enough drainage. Yeah. Oh, the, or the, yeah, the pools of shit. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, that we've fixed. That we've definitely yeah. fixed for the future. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, three million liters of beer. Like, if you, if you get to that level, um, there'll be a lot of lot of cans to sell for the sales. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good position to be in. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're like yeah. at half a million without a brewery. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, looking forward to that. Um, next question here from Daniel. So thanks for your question, Daniel. Um, just just asking about the brand and the username Black Flag. So um, obviously everyone knows the American '80s hardcore band called Black Flag. So. Um, just asking about like potential for, <laughs> or, um, you know, any, any sort of like thoughts there about like, um, you know, copyright trademarks. Um, and then, you know, as the brand grows, I mean, you mentioned there was two other black flag brewings, um, around the world, Actually, you know, like is this something you're thinking about like, yeah, trademarks, patents, all that sort of stuff. Um, any, any details to share there? Just, um, there's also a black flag fly spray yeah. in New Zealand yeah. and yeah. a winery. Yeah, in um, Australia, and yep. another brewery in the UK that we didn't get called on. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've um, <laughs> we've sort of um, we get asked that question a lot. Like, uh, is Henry Rollins going to be angry? We'll frame that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, there's too many. There's black flags everywhere. We actually um, we went down that path because yeah, it's a bit of punk. And but we also like raised the flag. Yeah. When we get into a new brewery, that was um, that when we were pirate brewing. brewing. We get in and we raised the black flag. Yeah. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword i guess and what we're trying to target there but yeah. um yeah i think uh, then we can build the sweet. logo it looks great yeah mm. i think we're going to be fine yeah awesome um and you know we do get this question at virtual like a lot of times about you know trademarks and, and names and there is you know you can have you know the same name in different categories um and there's no trademark sort of infringement there so that's um just something to think about too but it sounds like the boys have uh, put some thought into it as well. Um, next yeah, question. We, yeah. we yeah. definitely have it blindly. We've, we've reached out to um, a lot of the people too, and mm. we've yeah. had really positive feedback. And we've protected our trademark. Yeah. Like, 100%. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, thanks for the question. That's a good one. Um, next one here from Ben. Um, so Ben's asking in the future, if you achieve your strategy and Black Flag is purchased, um, will investors be paid out? I suppose that's the idea. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. yeah that's hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's in constitution, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, absolutely. And any of the conversations we've had, you guys today, we've talked about that. And we've been pretty upfront that that's where we would yeah. um, look for the exit strategy for everyone that's involved. So yes. Awesome. And you can um, check out the company constitution when the office live too, and some details will be in there about um, yeah, what happens in the case of uh, share purchase and also, you know, rights about, um, you know, who has to agree to, to sale of shares in terms of majority and all that sort of stuff, if you want to go through the weeds, but, um, you know, the answer is also there from the team as well. So um, in the event of a, a sale, like um, you will get paid out. That's what happens. Yep. Cool. Um, just going down here. So Jason's question here is, uh, he's asking, what's the strategy for interstate growth uh, is Coolum big enough? So I think we've already um, answered the question about Coolum, but yeah, just uh, maybe you want to walk us through um, the plans for interstate. Um, we've been targeting growth on our sales guys to achieve certain targets in certain regions yep. to um, allow us to be comfortable moving into newer regions. Yeah, in that, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So now that we've moved into our own place, now we can produce exactly, well, not exactly, but um, um, we can produce we what we require. Yeah. It's um, now it's absolutely something we've got and something we're um, pressed on. We've got a brand that sort of transcends what is um, the location that we're brewing in as mm -hmm. well. So there is a drive now to, um, there is absolutely a drive now to start pushing it interstate and start driving at home yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been one of our biggest holdups is because we have been contract brewing. It's just 
trying to facilitate the demand. Um, it's kind of kept us where we are in southeast Queensland and no, central exactly. Queensland. Yeah. yeah. But um, with a new facility coming on board, we can now really meet that demand. Um, we got ILG on the other week, which is super good news. So they're attached to a lot of major players in New South Wales, um, bottlers and Vic, yeah. yeah, Vic and stuff like that. So we can now like... Start, really, start to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, we did sell into Victorian... Yeah. Um, New, no, Victoria and South Australia yeah. for a little while. Uh, that was last, last year. year. Last yeah. year, yeah. Yeah, and pallets. immediately the pallets started going out and we realised that we could not <laughs> yeah. supply yeah. ourselves. Bring it back. Yeah. So yeah. We, um, we pulled that back pretty quickly in order to cater for our own area for growth and uh, strategize from there, basically. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to have um, the beer too punchy if it's a bit warm around. So um, got to keep that in mind for sure. Um, I'll just just uh, breeze through a few questions here that I can answer. So Mark asking, um, can we invest with a self-managed super fund? The answer is yes. Does depend on a few sort of nuances of your self-managed super fund. Uh, when the email goes out for when the offer goes live, there'll be a little bit of a, a link down the bottom about um, how to invest with a self-managed super fund, Mark. But if you want any more details before then, just shoot me an email. It's martin at birch.com and uh, I can send you that link as well. Uh, TJ here is just giving you guys a bit of a uh, bit of props in the video saying it's very funny. And yeah, we, we love that one too. Um, really unique approach. We're to actually, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we actually watch it. Yeah, really excited to see what everyone thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 A lot yeah. of outtakes, a lot of outtakes. We're actually in the studio, we filmed it in. So yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. Down there, I'm sure there's a, yeah, I'm sure there'd be some good bloopers from that. Uh, maybe that could be not, not <laughs> your best of rewards if you guys are. Uh, shout out because he's sitting there, Suntown Studios. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, mate. And thanks for letting the camera for this tonight, yeah. too, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I never looked better. Well, yeah, that was a great video. Um, Dino, so um, Dino's asking about the percentage uh, that Black Flame will own um, with the raise. So uh, we've sort of answered that one about like what we're giving away, but in the offer document, you'll see a full breakdown of the cap table, Dino. So I just um, just direct you to have a look at that one when it comes out and you'll see the full like percentage ownership in terms of the Black Flag crew and how much they're giving away and, and, and the different breakdown of that as well. Cool. Um, so let's go up to some more here. So Lauren, Lauren here is asking. Um, so yeah, plans for expanding the range of uh, of beers. So the cool range and the one offs, i.e., troublemakers, cutesy and fruitsy. So um, yeah, it sounds like. Oh, that girl. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I am itching at the bit to get there and get some new stuff out there. Um, what I love, what we've got, and it's it's doing well. It's what we're trying to keep up with because of our contract. Yeah. Um, cool, operations right. and the scheduling of their breweries and stuff like that as well. But we've got a 200 litre kit there ready to go with two fermenters there to punch out some really dumb stuff. Well, on site, yeah. On yeah. site, but then trial it and then big batch it. But yeah, immediately is what the goal is on that one. What are we? We're up to 30 plus limiteds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah 30 plus. Yeah. Yeah. Silent is a bit, but yeah. we'll get yeah. um, We've got one more beer to go in the uh, troublemakers. Troublemakers yeah. too. So we can't wait to get that out and. Oh, I actually up. just can't wait to get a Miss Car mix card and all that myself. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> yeah. Plus Ross is dying to do some more art. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a little bit of explanation why Ross is here, not tonight. He actually is very unwell, so yeah. he could be with us. So we brought him hey. along. Hey man. <laughs> He's a genius boy yeah. behind all our designs. The amount of work that he puts Stuff. in is just incredible. Uh, he's painted uh up Dean. Don't even know. Oh, don't even know how many murals and Beetle businesses races. and signs and and our new uh, cooling facility. So, shout out to him. Enough about Ross. I think he's watching. <laughs> oh, is he? Yeah. Get better, buddy. Maybe he's watching at home. Um, um, we actually, with beers and ideas, we've got a, a portfolio there of 137 yeah. beers ready to go. From what they yeah. are, the Names. recipes, the design, everything ready. So we're excited about getting some beers out. There we go. Yeah. Some fun with it. Looking forward to seeing that. And um, yeah, yeah, shout out to Ross too. We, we, we were also loving the fact that you guys have won some awards, uh, the Gaps Can Art, and um, obviously he's the brains behind that. So um, awesome work with that one here. So um, question here from Matt. Uh, thanks for your question. Uh, asking about, will this be the only investor buy-in or will there be more future, um, you know, future rounds that might dilute shares? 
um, if we don't want to buy into those as well. So um, again, there'll probably be some more details in the company constitution about, about all this stuff in terms of dilution and, and that. But um, if, the, if the team wants to talk through like, yeah, any plans for future capital raises, if, if you can think that far ahead, please do. Yeah, we don't have anything set in stone at the moment. We couldn't say yes or no. It's all about our strategic growth. And right now we understand what we need for the immediate future. Um, but essentially, yeah, we want to be profitable so we yeah. can self, yeah, self sufficient. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, we're, um, we're hopefully we can yeah. drive ourselves forward as strong as we can. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. we've got a couple of tap rooms. Luckily, we're um, we're pretty savvy when it comes to business. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully, um, it can be smooth from here. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But if that was to come to fruition, the value of the business would. You know, we're, we're looking yeah. for the value of the business to rise, but yeah, we don't have a crystal ball at exactly what we're up to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, if you do a future round, the value rises. Anyone who's a shareholder now will obviously experience that, um, you know, uptake in the value of your shares. It won't be diluted from that perspective. Um, but again, yeah, company constitution will have some more details about that. Um, got a question here from Alban, which I can answer in terms of will there be a platform for investors to trade their shares? So um, the answer is yes. So Virtual is working on a, a feature called Virtual Trade, and we've just done a pilot on that, which allows um, shareholders to trade their um, you know, previously bought shares in private companies um, if the company wants to go ahead and offer that. So um, in 2023, there'll be some more pilots of this. And if all goes to plan, um, this will be a feature we're rolling out the second half of next year. So this is a groundbreaking feature that allows people to trade private shares. Obviously, there's no stock exchange for that. Um, you know, no, no way of doing that at the moment. So, um, you know, stay tuned for that. The answer is we're working on it and um, still needs a few more tests. But um, we have done a, a pilot that was successful where we virtual traded some of our shares and, and it worked pretty well. So... Um, stay tuned for that. That'll be another way. If you want to um, cash out your shares, um, you can do so with that. Cool. Um, question here from Dino. So uh, asking about how many liters of beer you sold in uh, FY22, if you can um, recall that. And then, um, yeah, like what sort of level of sales would be requ required to get to the 3 million liter uh, per year capacity? <laughs> oh. That's a tough question yeah. to, to answer without having all up shit in front of us. Data, right? Yeah, 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 data, but we're definitely in the um, plus the 400,000 mark between yeah. 400 and 500. And then post 22, that's where we're like October yeah. was where we're really hitting that capacity on our brew. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's great. It's yeah. around that 400, 500. And then post that is, is getting into that high number. Yeah. But what it's going to take to get to that 3 million, well, really driving that strategy that we're talking about, that marketing, that brand awareness and we have that same beers in hand so, so again geographical location like yeah. being there with not in an aggressive sense but as a supportive sense for that community they can sell it themselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. beers in hands, <laughs> beers in hands. <laughs> keep drinking it that's it that's one um cool thanks for that so a uh, question here from bruce about um the malula bar location so saying there's a lot happening there um, and will you, is your plan to still maintain a strong presence in Maluba? That's, um, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's OG territory. <laughs> yeah. So we built that out in 2015 or 16. Five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Four years ago. Seven. Oh. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we built that a little while ago, and it's, um, it's been a labour of love, that one. Broke a toe over it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we're definitely keeping that. Our offices were upstairs there. We had a tiny, dingy office up until only about three weeks ago. And... Um, yeah, that's uh, being converted into a larger bar. The uh, the whole place is gorgeous, and yep, yeah, we're definitely keeping that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's eclectic, and it, and it goes <laughs> it's eclectic. But to go back to the strategy, brew pub, the yeah. tap houses is part of it, so that's yeah. definitely staying. Tried and tested method now. Yeah. yeah, and the popularity of that over the years is has just gone strength to strength too. Um, it's a perfect addition to the Mool Bar region. It's got a lovely beer garden. Um, really tropical we get bands in there uh, pool table uh <laughs> yeah um puppies and pints so yeah we're 100 keeping that venue yeah. yeah nice one good stuff look forward to that um so yeah just again with the questions like i'm going to prioritize ones that have been upvoted the most but we'll try and get to everyone's questions tonight if we, if we do go over um we will because yeah we're just here to try and answer as many as we can um <laughs> in case anyone has to run but um yeah. Question here from Matt. So 
Uh, Matt's asking, how long do you expect the funds invested in this process will sustain your growth? So I guess like maybe have you thought about like, you know, the roadmap of, you know, how long these uh, funds will be, you know, maintained for in terms of spend and like, yeah, if you need to raise again or, you know, if you hope uh, profit will sort of drive growth in the future. Yeah, we, well, I might take that one. We actually really did think about that and you'll actually see a line on them with operational cash flow. So that's that sustainability piece. So obviously growth businesses, you know, will take cash and you need to give it that oxygen. Yeah. So we've thought that process through and the idea is to give it a sustainability with the capital investment from the marketing and the actual asset growth with the brewery. We've also got that operational uh, layer to to grow, generate profits, and then that piece Steve's talking about for reinvesting those profits to grow. So definitely thought about that. Can I tell you the exact timeline? No, and and would be it wouldn't be um, smart to to do that because there's a lot of different yeah, variables. Yeah, there's a lot of variables involved. But in we that. do have a plan to be yeah. sustainable with our um, cash and our business. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And obviously there'll be a breakdown in the offer document. Uh, we, we saw a slide on it tonight, but in terms of the intended use of funds and, you know, it looks like a lot of those intended uses are for growth activities, if not all of them. So, um, you know, it looks yeah. like the plan to put your money to, uh, to good work there. Cool. Um, Alex here, thanks for your question. Um, so this is a good one. Um, why is Black Friday, why is Black Friday crowdfunding? And, um, you know, why not get a load from a bank or and maintain ownership? We um we actually went down this path first and first of all um, we wanted to bring people on board. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. We really saw this as an opportunity to grab a whole lot of people that were interested in what we were doing and basically enjoy what we're doing yeah. with us. Mm. Yeah. And ambassadors for what we are. So mm -hmm. I think um like the there's a challenge with um any brewery any business is getting people to drive the same path you are as an owner. Yeah. yeah. So that was our first and foremost thought is this is why we will do it. We've been, um, we've definitely had, we've definitely got the opportunity to throw in the entire capital. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. And you'll see in the offer document, I'm happy to put that, you'll actually see we have lines of credit with banks already. Yeah. But that piece that Steve's talking, we're like, yeah. this is brilliant. We can yeah. bring all these investors on board and that collective mentality we have, we think it's just such a win. And then yeah. secondary to that, we get the capital investment to grow. To, yeah. With haste. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so we don't have all the ideas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, definitely a nice one. Thanks for that. Um, got a question here. It's a, bit, it's a popular one uh, from Damien. So for the home brewers amongst us, uh, can I buy grain slash hops from you guys? No. <laughs> Not yeah. <from> us. <laughs> yeah, no. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, we can get it yeah. to you. If whatever you need, we can sort it out. Yeah, yeah come by. We'll get Simon, our brewer, to help you out. He's a, he loves talking to everyone and yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Special hookups. That's yeah. a popular question. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. A um, couple of comments here. Thanks for your comments. I'll just go through them quickly. Mark's saying he's going to buy a bigger couch for you boys. Um, squeeze you all in there. So yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you'd fit Ross, even if you did make it tonight. But um, <laughs> just, he would actually lay across us. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thanks for that. Um, Got a question here. Thanks, Chris. I, you know, I know I should have a beer in my hand. Um, I know I'm letting the team down. Uh, next time I will. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Come on, Chris. Chris. You better. <laughs> Sorry, come on. There yeah. Thanks. Get in there. I've got a big one behind me anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll definitely be <laughs> stocking up the beers uh, down at Virtual once um, once we finish this process. We, we love having all the beers for the companies that we raise um, and looking forward to trying these ones for sure. Um, so Jason here is asking, have you already identified potential areas to open other tap houses and will this mainly be located in Queensland? Mm, question. Yeah, me and Ben yeah. started this one early on in the piece. Mm. Yeah, it was something we were exploring for um, potential growth. We looked um, north and we've looked south. We've, yes. And we've looked west. Yeah, yeah. 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 There is, um, there is no actual certain place at the moment, but um, north and North of where we are in the region, North Queensland, and definitely then into New South Wales. Oh, out of state. So yeah. we've got some out strategic state. partnerships that we really, really want to play yeah. on as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also um, geographically making sure we're not challenging ourselves. Yeah. 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 So bringing it into further afield areas instead of competing against exactly what we're doing. Yeah. And that's, um, that's a growth model that we can absolutely foresee. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Queensland is a, is a brewing market at the moment. It's definitely hotting up. Um, so yeah, it's seen some really exciting stuff there. So, you know, good to know that you guys have got a really solid presence there as well. Um, Matthew here is asking um, just about the cooling facility. Do you, do you own the land or have a long-term lease on that site? Um, yeah, just to mitigate risk from cheeky landlords. And he also says, cheers, legends. <laughs> Was that, was that our landlord that I was yeah. <laughs> No, we've got a uh, long-term lease. So we've got a 10-year lease with our facility with options. Yeah. So um, and a fantastic landlord. And a fantastic yeah. landlord. So it's his masterpiece as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. showcasing. He's yeah. been um, with us the whole journey. And um, yeah, we couldn't be happier with that arrangement. So we're feeling very comfortable. People yeah. say they're like the landlords, but this guy's dude. The dude. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ten year lease. Yeah, I mean, like two thousand square meter facility like that. Um, I don't think the landlord will be kicking you out anytime soon. No, <laughs> no. He's pretty happy we're here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. Um, what's that one? Uh, Andrew here is asking. Um, yeah, like similar point, um, similar topic. Like in terms of like uh, foreseeable restrictions that you think the council might impose, like you know, like live music or anything like that. Um, do you want to go into more details about that one? As much as we complained earlier about the council, we actually do. We work really, really closely. Yeah. 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 So we've got, um, we've, with having venues around for so long, we've got very solid relationships with everyone. Yeah. So yeah, it's a real drive for us, um, especially in our facility and especially in what we do, yeah. that we can have some very strong music events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're pretty excited about it. Plus the Sunshine Gas yeah. Council's driving Sunshine Coast to be the beer capital yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're well on board with what well, we can do no wrong. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And once again, that was part of um, the planning for this whole facility up in Coolum is to have that space to allow us to do that. Yeah. Um, we come from that crowd with owning venues. We love live music. We love food, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's a brewery first and foremost, but we really um, spend a lot of time looking at the venue itself also. So and what we can do with it. And, and it's really Wonderful. important to us, yeah. Bring the party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on an open night too, we had a half pipe in there too. So yeah. that's just the that's thing. the start of it and the scope is just endless with it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just another question on the venue Um, in terms of like, is there going to be any space for kids potentially? Have you thought about that? Yeah. 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 It's actually going downstairs and that'll be there in about a week and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, probably. Yeah. Give it away you can't see it, but oh. my height at the moment is actually under like adult rides, so you yeah. know, I'll, I'll be pushing for a kid. <laughs> so I'm in there for sure. So Plus we got PlayStation. Well. Yeah, we got PlayStation. Yeah. So it's kids. dog friendly, yeah. kid friendly, kids um, being me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we just want to be inclusive. We're actually, Come on. we had three PlayStation ones arrive today. Yep, yeah. original PlayStation original. ones. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Nice one. Um, cool. Good stuff. Yeah, lots of exciting plans for the cooling facility there. So uh, Marty here is asking, um, do you have any uh, plans for like national bottle store distribution contracts? Like, I guess you're talking about like the big players like Dan's and BWS and, and all those ones. We actually really enjoy working with those guys. Those guys. Yeah. They're um, they're real progressive in what they're trying to bring on. So we're in them just to confirm that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, yeah. but um, going national is, is definitely something we strive to achieve as soon as we can. Yeah. We're um we mail beer out to so many people. Our online sales is pretty um strong. Yeah, and I think it's a brand association. So it's um yeah, being able to bring that into the different states, into in, into national. Yeah, really wonderful. Yeah. yeah, once again, we just uh had chats with ILG last week, so that opens up a whole whole awesome amount of doors in New South Wales, mm -hmm. Victoria, and Queensland. Uh, to the big ones like Bottler and, and the off-premise. But even the Dan's have been a massive supporter of us. Yeah. They, out there, Kiwana yeah. Dan's, they would set up a um, island stand showing the black flag. And that's just one example of many, many breweries and a big shout out to all the independents as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've been Absolutely. really behind us from day one. So, yeah, we're really, we're really excited about growing that relationship. Sweet, sweet. So already in a couple of the big ones and, and yeah, like plans to grow. That's, that's super exciting. Um, Damien here is asking, is there plans to uh, brew future Nipa beers, tapping into current and future haze craze? You know, our second beer was the Grim Nipa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grim Nipa. Grim Nipa. So it was actually a, uh, uh, how do I say it? Say it. It wasn't a, it was a failed beer. It wasn't by design. Yeah, <laughs> and then it turned into this awesome tasting beer. Yeah. And then this greatest decal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it went the really well. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that's um that's definitely something that's coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's sky's the limit with this. I don't, 
Yeah. And we've got to do the Grim Reaper again. Yeah. Grim Reaper 2. Yes, we will do it. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Cool, look out for that one. Um, Chrissy here is asking in terms of like future job opportunities, um, like based on your projection growth, have you thought about that? Like maybe what the team's going to look like? And um, yeah, not sure if you're asking for Every a job, day. Chrissy, but um, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've scaled our org chart to associate with our growth. So yes, 100%, we have, we know exactly what we A lot exactly of question marks on heads there. Yeah. yeah. Once again, we want to invest in people, invest in our team. Big time. Um, comes, you know, I think we're all massive with, supporters well we are um and that's what we want to do we want to build that culture in-house and that's how it gets across to the venues and off-premise that we work with so it's really important to us we're fortunate enough to have a very solid team at the moment yep. everybody's um well well invested and well interested in what yeah. we're doing uh, we got a lot of a lot of bartenders through to sales guys with everyone yeah and it's it's really really good yeah yeah yeah, nice one. So yeah, look out for future job opportunities there. Um, Miles here has got a question about, are you guys looking for hands-on investors or silent investors? So obviously there's been some some great sort of initiatives that you guys have got there, but do you want to maybe just talk us through what your plans are? Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good question. So I guess we want you to be involved, but if, if you feel like this is just an investment strategy for you, happy days. Yeah. But if you actually want to have a voice in black flag we want to do that and that's why we created the beers and ideas yeah. forum yeah, the door's open and and that's that's the area obviously you know we're operating this business and we're going to really drive it to our our beliefs but we're definitely going to be ears open to our investors and what they're telling us and taking those ideas on board so yeah, it's your choice really yeah. i've talked to some awesome people over the last couple of weeks yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super oh, stoked for it. it's, it's good ideas that's too. our collaborative yeah. approach too like we want we want to be that yeah. We want to be able to be approached and say, hey, you want to look at this and do that? That's, yeah. 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 Nice one. Um, Angus here has a question about uh, current investors or investors joining in this round. Will they have um, you know, special access to future releases of shares? So again, details in the constitution. With virtual, what we do is ordinary shares um, just to kind of keep everyone on the same uh, level playing field. So you don't get like preference share rights where you get to have like first dibs. But um, again, it's up to the company if they want to give uh, any sort of like special sort of allocations. So yeah, do you guys want to talk through that? Yeah, devil in detail with the constitution. Yeah, I'd hate yeah. to um, muck that up. Or um, it. It, it's yeah. all it's all there in many, many lines. And yeah, we'll yeah. have a look at the constitution and then shout out, I guess, if you've got questions on it. Yeah, yeah. So have a look at that. Um, that's going to be released when the offer goes live and uh, everyone will have access to it. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, and then Jay here is asking, so what happens to shareholders funds slash involvement if the, the investment targets aren't met? Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, like um, investing in early stage companies, there, there's inherent risk within that. But um, yeah, if you guys want to talk through like, yeah, obviously worst case scenario here, but yeah, um, have you considered sort of like any risk sort of management with this this type of investment? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So sorry, it was the question if we don't raise the funds or just the business in, as a whole? Uh, I think it's like if the shareholders, um, yeah, if you don't hit your targets, so not like if you don't raise the funds, but if you oh. like, like growth targets, I think, and if I've got that wrong, please uh, feel free to comment again and we can go through it again. Yeah, well, we come back, we come from... Um, risk management type backgrounds so that's a real big part of it and as cool as the design and all the fun and the events and that we actually do sit and really look yeah. at the strategic risks in the business yeah. and risk assess it well absolutely but yeah. we're looking at yeah. um we're looking at what our higher and lower can be yep. yeah yeah strategically planned yeah yeah, yeah. executed it's yeah. Uh, in the offer document you'll see what we're seeing is the high level risk but you know um brand brand is everything so the reputation of our brands are big ones. So we're putting a lot of work in making sure we've got risk mitigation policies and protecting our brand, our product, our people that we're dealing with. Yeah, um, I could actually go on all night, but it would be um, it'd be a long night. So yeah, definitely we've got the risk assessment, what we're seeing in the offer document. But um, I'd really encourage you to give us a buzz and, and we can shout, shout out all what we're seeing with that because yep. it's, a, it's a daily conversation for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it seems like the team's really approachable, taking heaps of calls. So, um, any any follow ups after this one, um, you'll have all their details. I'm sure with like the email comms. So, feel free to reach back out. 
Um, just going through the list here, I got a few shout outs. So um, yeah, just just um, Chantel here saying, uh, no questions, you Black Flag lads are awesome. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, TJ um, saying it's keen to be part of the team. Hundred percent. Want to talk to you guys soon. Um, yeah, nice to meet you. I think I don't know if we met you today, but yeah, thanks TJ for that. Um, and then I yeah. uh, got one here from Chrissy saying, uh, when the offer goes live, uh, what is the expiry time to invest? So I can sort of walk you through that in a little bit of detail. So. Offer goes live. We're planning to launch on Tuesday. So then we basically have like a week and uh, sorry, two weeks and two days, like 14 days uh, is like the expiry time. But uh, everyone who's on the EOI list will have special access to what's called the private period for the first 48 hours. Um, and that's just for people who registered early, like, like all of you. So uh, in that time, you'll have all the details from um, the Black Flag guys in terms of the offer document, company constitution, all that stuff. And so that's really your chance to invest and get in early and get ahead of everyone else. Um, so, you know, if you want to wait the full 14 days, obviously you're welcome to, but, um, really for everyone on the EOI list, they like to jump in early. So as soon as this offer goes live on Tuesday, that's when we'd, um, we'd suggest getting on board with it so you don't miss out. Um, uh, just to give you a practical example of a brewery, um, pretty close to Black Flag that raised recently and their offer sold out within two and a half hours. So, <laughs> That can what happen. Yeah, well that's, done to them. Yeah, well, well done. done. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's yeah. So it can, it can sell out pretty quickly. So just make sure that first day you've kind of um, got uh, got your finger on the trigger for that. And um, all the details will come out about time and everything like that in terms of when it's going <laughs> on. So, cool. Um, Marty here is asking about, um, uh, so that's more of a comment, um, just saying like he's really loving the, the the vibe of the new premises and looking forward to the future. Thanks for that one. Uh, I was going up here to Miles um, asking about your presence down in New South Wales uh, and also asking about like hands-on investors down there. So I guess like, yeah, maybe another question is around like, you know, beers and ideas. Is this for people who can just make it there in person or have you thought about ways of getting people involved from like interstate or elsewhere? We would love for everyone to come. That'd be great, but um, yeah, we'll probably set up a big projector with yeah. all these Zoom faces yeah, we'll on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just with us traveling around so much, it's part of why we love it and why we do it. So, we've got a, a group of um, people or investors or whoever loves a brand in state, a certain yeah. area um, out of state. We will absolutely love to come down and have a chat and have a beer. Uh, it's part of why we do it. We, we, we love ideas. it. Yeah. yeah, we'll do our best to be inclusive, especially with the project. But yeah. the uh, Sunshine Coast Airport's only around the corner too, so <laughs> yeah. it's not too hard to get there. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So yeah, if, if they don't make it down there, Damon's also asking for a courtesy bus to get get them up. But um, <laughs> sure, we're working. So, on yeah, we're working on courtesy buses at the moment. Yeah, yeah, cool. Get a get a convoy going. Um, yeah. Well, heaps more questions. So we'll just maybe go for another like five minutes just to kind of um, keep keep a cap on time. So if anyone's got any more burning questions, please feel free to ask them now. I'll just go, go through a few more. So Lauren, um, who I think is really clued up on all your beers. So thanks for your questions, Lauren. So she's asking, what slash how do you decide on a core range over a one-off? Oh. Mm. So oh, yeah. can you give an example <laughs> on that one was Astro Punk. Oh yeah. So yeah. we released that as a um as a limited a limited very and, yeah. um we sold on, out online before it was ready to go to release. Yeah. So that became a core range beer pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the imagery and the taste and the like it's a it's a cracker. So that's that's where we started to pigeon exactly like what it was that core yeah. was going to be. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just it's open ended. Um, if the beer does very well and there's that response we'll definitely add it to the core. Um, if we just think that it's it's just suited for that moment, we'll do it then, but we're always capable of bringing it back because that's, that's oh, what yeah, we do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Let's see heroes again. Um, cool. So yeah, we're, we're kind of coming to the end of the question. <clears throat> we'll just get through nearly 40 questions. So thanks guys. You've been, you've been answering them really, really well. Um, and I just want to point out again, we'll have a copy of this recording after the webinar is done. So if anyone missed anything or, if, you know, you got a friend who didn't make it, you can obviously just share that with them and, and, and watch it back. Um, so Marty here is asking about, uh, what is the main area of the business, um, in terms of like the funding going and like, where's it going to be spent to just sort of have a rough idea. We got a bit of a split going through with our uh, marketing and our um, uh, assets. Assets, yeah. 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 So the um, the growth on the brew house with the the production capabilities, yeah. but uh, yeah, and drive a lot towards marketing to make sure that we're keeping up. With yeah, the, the mindset 
is really that the brewery has to keep up with our marketing, which is yeah. driving the, the demand. The demand we're getting <coughs> from the marketing, the brewery's keeping up, and that's how we've got the model. Yeah, set up. They work very, very close, hand in hand. So, yeah, awesome. Um, thanks for that one. So uh, Chrissy here is asking. So she's saying she's a very um, business-minded person. However, she's not a big drinker. Um, and she doesn't know uh, a whole lot about beer. So she's just asking a basic question, like why would someone like her want to invest in you guys? Good question. Yeah. yeah question. <laughs> well, I think I could answer that one. And it's what yeah. Steve said before. We actually believe we're more of a marketing brand than we are a beer company in a lot of ways. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can look at it as a product, be it whatever, and just know that we're actually going to differentiate ourselves from the market. That's my take on it. Yeah, we're also very good with business. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're very, we're calculated and we're trying to make sure that we're making the best decisions ongoing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, that, that that sort of analogy about the marketing business and Red Bull, it's a really good example. Sounds like you guys have been doing heaps of like in-person activations and, and like getting out amongst it, which I think like this day and age, especially like seeing Facebook marketing, those sort of costs going through the roof is like, just such a such a much better way of marketing a brand like this. So um, really awesome to see that. Um, so Jamie here is asking, is there a minimum buy-in or maximum? So again, like on Tuesday, you'll see all these details. Like the company is able to set minimum like share uh, buy-in amounts and also maximums. Um, so if you guys want to add any details to that, like you're more than welcome to, or we can just wait until Tuesday. We, we get like a, a virtual like to keep it in sort of parcels. So starting as low as 50, which not many companies do because it's not really that much, up to 250, 1,000, all that sort of stuff. So again, if you guys want to share anything, otherwise we can. Yeah, I think we can talk yeah, about that. Of course. Uh, minimum buy-in, $250. Yep. Yeah. That's um, literally yeah. $1. one. It's a big yeah. piece too. And we don't. It, we don't see a person that puts $250 any less than a person that puts the 10 grand. We're really excited about the um, coal investors on there. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that that's really important to us. But yeah, 10000 for retail. And then obviously, if you want to you know, invest more, then you're going past that 10000 and just get that wholesale certification from your accountant. And um, yeah, happy to have you on board. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, we're coming to the end of the questions now. I'm just going to run through a few, a few more statements here. Um, and thanks everyone for for such an engaging webinar and for sticking around. So, um, so James here is saying, uh, as a local in the Coolum area, thank you for investing in our community. Fantastic! Woo, fit, thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, James. So look out for James when he comes around. Uh, Bruce says he's uh, liking the sound of things. Thanks so much. He has to push off. Um, Jay here, he answered uh, Jay's question earlier, um, saying thank you. You know, he uh, he's very risk uh, assessment based, so I'd like to see the worst case scenario, best uh, case. So you guys have thought about that, which is which is great. Miles is saying thank you guys. This is amazing. Can't wait for Tuesday. Um, Marty, I think he's got an office next door, and he's uh, tr trying to see if he can put a tap through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Working out. Depends how much you invest, Marty. Um, yeah. Mark, current value of the company, uh, we're going to wait until Tuesday for the Alpha Doc. You'll have all those details there. Um, we talked through a little bit about um, the, the sort of decision making process the guys went through earlier. If you missed that, check out the recording. Um, and Matt here is asking, maybe this will be the last question. So Matt is asking, is there a limit on how many shares you're dishing out for this? Uh, if you get way more than the target, does that, does that give the business a higher value on paper than what it actually is worth at the moment? Um, I mean, I can answer that. Basically, when um, we're going to be doing this, this offer period, we'll have the minimum maximum target. We can't go above the maximum target. So what you see is what you get in terms of that. So even if the offer blows up, which which we're sure it will, we will, um, we, we can't go more than 1.5 million. So the, the value and the maximum target and the minimum target won't change from Tuesday. So... Uh, if you do miss out, you have to wait until next time. Um, so that's why it's important to get in there early. Cool. Um, we'll wrap up the questions now, guys. And thanks so much again for, for being so generous with your time. I'll just throw back now to the Black Flag team, uh, just in terms of any final words for the people who have stuck around on the call. If you want to just uh, you know, give a shout out or any sort of advice about next steps. Uh, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, thank it's, you. It's, um, it's been a hell of a few weeks. It's um it's been good chatting with everybody and getting their understanding of what Absolutely. we are and like the enjoyment that some people get out of it is fantastic. It yeah. makes you like it's, real kicking stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So no, just thank you very much. Yeah. And yeah, any questions, give us a shout. I've emailed out raise at blackflagbrewing.com.au. We're um we're chatting with a lot of people too. So if you've left the message, yeah, yeah just yeah. get back to us whenever. Yeah. yeah. We've been on the phones. 
and um, we will continue to uh, call people over the next couple of days. So if we can't get to you, we apologise. Just throw us an email, a message, but we we will endeavour to get there. Or come to the brewery. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're always there yeah. <laughs> every day. Perfect, perfect. That's awesome, guys. And yeah, thanks so much for your time. Um, this offer is going to go out on Tuesday. I'm super excited about it here at Virtual. Uh, any questions about how the platform works, obviously you can email me, man, at virtual.com. But yeah, stay tuned for more details from the Black Flag team. And uh, just one more time, we're going to send out the recording of this webinar. So if uh, any mates missed it, feel free to share that around so they don't miss out. Cool. Thanks so much, everyone. And uh, nice. cheers. Thanks, cheers, guys. guys. Thank, Thank you. you. See you, ladies.